Welcome back, artists. All right, we spent some time doing observational drawings of candies. Now we are going to draw our candy onto watercolor paper. I'm going to give you guys the choice. You can choose all three of the candies if you drew three last time, or you can just choose one and draw it large. We want to fill the paper. We're still talking about the rule of thirds and thinking about that compositional rule. So here you can see on my drawing, I put my candy up on the upper one third and close to the left edge one third. So I have more space over on the right and at the bottom to make a more interesting composition. We're going to use watercolor paint today. So I like to have a variety of paintbrushes. I always take a bigger paintbrush here that I can do large areas like the background. I like a flat brush and then a smaller pointed brush. And then we're going to use liquid watercolor paints in the primary colors. So we have yellow. Carefully hold it and remove the lid. Put them in the tray. That way they will be protected in case you drip or spill, but we are not going to waste the paint and spill. Also, because we only have the three primaries, we need to be very careful to not contaminate them. We want our yellow to still look like it's yellow at the end of class. So please wash those paint brushes really well. I'm going to be looking for good responsible artists to reward at the end of the class. I'm going to start with my smaller paintbrush. I'm going to start doing my candy. Last week we also talked about shadows. So here's my cast shadow, which is going to be my darkest value. If the light's coming this direction, the lightest value of my object is going to be on the top. That'll be the white or a very light yellow or very light red or light, light blue. This shape here is going to be my medium tone. So I'm going to make my candy a pinkish white color. So I'm going to start by just painting water on the shape here that I'm going to make pink because I want it to be very light. So I dip just the tip of my paintbrush. There's hardly any paint on there. I just dipped the tip and then I can put it right on that water that I painted, move it around so it makes a very light value or pink. I also like to have a rag so I can wipe my paintbrush on the rag and then I can come back in and remove some of the pigment to make it even a lighter value. So I just slowly work moving that paint around. So that's a really nice light value and that's a great way to start right there on the top. I'm now going to take some of that red and put my medium value right in along here and I just am going to brush that color in maybe put a little bit along the edge of the wrapper where the medium value would be where the lights not hitting it I'm also going to take some of this red and put it down in my shadow because my shadow will be my darkest value so I can just lay it in nice and, and dark, but not creating a puddle. I want to move the paint around and let it stain. Really what the watercolor paint is doing is it's staining the paper. It's called watercolor for a reason because we add water to it. Also, watercolor paint is by nature transparent. We want to be able to see the white of the paper through here. To make my colors darker, I will do a technique called glazing, which is where you add color on top of color on top of color, but you wait for the first layer to dry. So you wait for each layer to dry. So this is a great start. I've got my, my um, values established, my lighter values, my medium value, my darker value. I think I'm going to come back in here now and do some background. This will be the light. The light's coming from this direction. So the background back here will actually be dark because the light's going to be in front. So now I'm going to use my larger paintbrush and again I'm just going to wash my background area with clean water 
This helps to spread the paint. This is why I like to do this. Now I'm gonna take the blue. So my background back here is going to be blue. And I'm just going to pull that color all the way around. Again, I don't want big puddles of water or paint, so I spread the paint around and move my, my paint. All right, so that's, again, a good layer. I'm gonna take my paintbrush and rinse it off. And now I'll do the same thing down here and put, I think I'm gonna do yellow down here. So again, I'm gonna start with just laying in some water so that my yellow can spread out. And I want this area to be lighter because that is where the light is really going to hit down here. Now you can see here where there's some bleeding happening because my red wasn't quite dry and it got some water on it and blended in. I'm going to avoid getting the yellow that close to my blue because I don't want green to come down. Okay, so there we go. There, now I have my colors laid in. Now I can come back in and work on my, on my candy again. Now I'm gonna use my smaller paintbrush again. And I'm going to put just a little bit of yellow in here. Now this time I'm not gonna get my candy wet, my paper wet. I'm just gonna put some yellow on here to create another value. Uh, not quite the white of the paper. And I can even go over my red that I put in because yellow and red make what color? I hope you all said orange. And keeping in mind that this is the lightest area of my candy, I'm going to now darken a little bit of the yellow here or the red and now for the shadow down here, to make it darker, I'm actually going to lay some blue on top of my red, and that will create what color? Hope you all said purple. So this is called glazing. I'm putting that darker color on top to create the secondary color, the purple. And I love this happy accident here, how the yellow kind of makes a green over here and the red and the orange is spilling in down here. Those are what I call happy accidents. It just looks interesting and it creates more interest in your, in your painting. And uh, now what I'm gonna do, I have some blue on my paintbrush. I wanna darken down here too. As the candy turns away from the light, this is gonna be dark, nice, nice and dark right down in here. So I can put a little bit of a darker there. You could even draw with your paintbrush. Maybe put some thin lines in here like the wrapper is twisting and looking like it has a shadow on it. So you can play around with that paintbrush. See what it, what it will do, what kind of marks you can make and um, explore that way. So that's a pretty good start. I would just continue to add some layers. I might darken my background back here because... I want that yellow and that top part of my candy to really stand out. So I would just keep working in a slow, steady way to darken my colors and add interest to my painting. Well, I hope that helps and it gets you guys started on using watercolor paint. So go slow. The trick with watercolor is to go slow. Let your paint dry. Even here I can see I'm starting to get a blob of paint. So what you do is you squeeze your paintbrush out so there's no moisture in it and you can pick that color up. So see how it's lightening it? Say I wanted to even put some different values in here. Squeeze the paint out, come back over here and pick that color up. So you can pick the paint or the water up if you get too much on there and it's too dark all at once. All right, let one area dry and then paint it. Down here, I'm just gonna put a little bit of 
interesting value changes. Now I'm going to rinse my paintbrush and I'm going to blend these two colors together to kind of make a greenish yellow. Just again to add some interest to my picture. All right, go slow artists, have fun.